Hello everyone, Peter Harris with Commercial Property Advisors. Hope you are doing well today. I want to share with you a very, very important topic. And that is, uh, when you purchase a uh, commercial size apartment building, uh, five units and greater, you're going to have to perform a full property inspection, right? And it's much like the same inspection that you would do when you purchase a home, except in this case, it is 10 times more important to capture the potential landmines, and landminers are designed to uh, kill you and maim you, right, in war. Well, the same applies when you do an inspection on an apartment building. So these landmines can take you out, okay? And on the other side, these are these the smaller issues, but just important, these are what I call the, the bullets you must dodge, and bullets designed to stop you and, and uh, injure you. Well, there's a lot of little things that a beginner can't capture uh, uh, you know, or can't avoid because they're a beginner. So in this video, what I want to do is share with you how to perform a very thorough, full apartment building inspection. All right, so let's get started. What I'm going to start off with is what are the potential landmines right, to, to avoid? Okay? Some of the landmines to avoid are the roof. Is the roof old? Roofs are very expensive. So these items that I'm going through here, these are big ticket items. You, you, if you were to miss one of these, it could derail your investment, okay? And uh, secondly, plumbing, right? If the plumbing is antiquated, you're gonna have leaks galore and repairing plumbing inside the walls, under the ground is very, very expensive, okay? Uh, number three, electrical. We all know how important electrical is. And uh, if the electrical is outdated, you may have to replace it, not on the home, but on this entire building from the, from the ground floor to the top. We're talking big dollars here, if you miss that, okay? A landmine indeed, right? Uh, number four is uh, the, the furnaces, right? Are the furnaces on their last leg? You know, for example, let's say you have a small eight unit apartment building. To replace that furnace that heats those units, that's, we're, we're talking $12,000 just to replace that furnace. Imagine doing it on a 20, 30, or 100 unit property, what that will cost if you miss it. Again, potential landmine. And lastly, um, foundation, okay? If the foundation is starting to crumble, right? That can cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars to repair. It may not be repairable, right? So, uh, th so those are the potential landmines that you must spot, you must uh, avoid when purchasing your commercial size apartment building. Now, let me share with you on the, on, the, on the second side, these are some of the potential bullets, right, to dodge, right? I'll call these bullets. Bullets are designed to stop you and injure you. These can surely stop you and injure you if you don't catch them, okay? All right, oh, before I get started, I put uh, beginners beware, right? So most beginners don't know this, right? This is what we teach our students right, to catch these things. And by the way, when our students do a, a full property inspection, it comes to us and we go through each line item with them and we go over these items and these, um, these items to make sure that we catch as much as we can, okay? All right, mold, right? Some of you are thinking, oh, mold's a deal killer. No, it's not. The bathroom mold, the green mold, it's not as bad as you think. It's the certain types of mold, okay? that can derail you, okay? So these are some of the bullets you have to know, okay? All right, uh, code violations. Let's say the property owner has a bad relationship with the city and there's lots of code violations on the city. He's not fixing loose stairways, uh, stairwells, uh, missing banisters, you know, all different types of things on the property. If he's not fixing them, um, you know, how do you get around that, okay? What's the cost of that? Are these deal killers, okay? Uh, zoning infractions, this is huge, right? Most beginners have no clue what a zoning infraction is. Let's say you want to purchase this uh, six unit property. I'll start with a small property, right? And then on the bottom unit, it was not built with permits or, or this area is in zone for residential, okay? For an apartment dwelling. Well, the city can come in and have you remove everything and they'll come and check. So this is now converted to basement, no longer being used as an income producing dwelling, okay? that can hurt your numbers and, uh, and then you can no longer use it after you purchase it. So these are type of things you have to discover during your inspection, okay? Next is 
uh, the Zenco or Federal Pacific electrical panels, right? A beginner will have no clue what that is. Well, the Zenco, the Zenco panels and the Federal Pacific panels catch on fire. Did you know that? Okay. And uh, there's uh, class action lawsuits, there's lawsuits galore all over, but they were pretty prevalent in areas of the United States where they, they uh, were using a quite a few apartment buildings which caught on fire, right? So, uh, uh, and these buildings, uh, some of them haven't caught on fire yet, right? So uh, things like that. Moisture, this one is huge, okay? Uh, moisture, water is very intrusive. And if you're not able to spot certain things on the ceiling, floor, baseboard, or even in the outside parking lot, this water, this moisture, and these water leaks, they, this damage, right, are waiting to happen. We're talking big bucks, all right? So these are the landmines, and these are the bullets to dodge. And what I want to share with you next is I want to go over with you uh, why we need to do the inspection and actually how to do it. All right, let's get started. All right, let's start right here with the question, why perform an inspection? I have three main reasons, right? Number one is you need to know what's wrong with the property, right? Makes sense. Think of your inspection, your, your property inspection as when you go to the doctor on the annual basis and they do a full physical, right? Where you're going to find out what's right with your body and what's wrong with your body so you can work on what's not right. Same thing with your property, okay? You need to know. Number two, doing a full property inspection would set you up to renegotiate the deal based upon your findings. Uh, once you have your inspection done, you're gonna go back to the seller and do your best to renegotiate the terms into a better deal, right? Or if you can't, you, uh, the, the inspection part allows you to remove the emotions from the deal and if you can't get it uh, to the way you want it, you're gonna cancel the deal, okay? So very important, this number two. Number three is doing an inspection. It is your responsibility as an investor to do one, okay? And to being a good steward over your money or over someone else's money, such as your investor money. So you have to perform an inspection. It's the responsible thing to do, and if you are considered a good steward over your money or someone else's, it must be done. Got it? Okay, those are three main reasons. What I want to jump into next is the two types of inspections to do ASAP. Let's do that next. There are two types of property inspections you have to do. The first type is a pre-site inspection that I'll go over in a second. And then you have the full-blown uh, professional property inspection that I'll talk about secondly. So in this um, one or two minutes here, I'm going to discuss with you what the pre-site inspection looks like and what you should do exactly, okay? All right, so this is the pre-site inspection, and guess what? It's free. It doesn't cost you any money to do this part. And this part is so critical in determining do you move forward or do you pass on the deal. Got it? Okay, so the first thing you're going to do, very simple, right? You're going to Google the address, right? And you're going to check for noise. You're going to check, are you close to the train tracks? And that will be undesirable. Are you close to a landfill where it, get, where it can get smelly and people just won't rent there? Is it close to a cemetery where people are scared to live there? Do you see where I'm going? And also, too, how far away are you from uh, transportation and downtown and shopping and restaurants? There's a, web, a website you can go here called uh, walkscore.com. You enter the address and it will, it will uh, produce a score for you uh, how far you're away from the buses, major transportation, shopping, and uh, things like that, right? So very important, so do a walk score, okay? And you'll see, it's a pretty cool website, right? So go get the address, number one. Number two, check crime, okay? You can go to a website called spotcrime.com, right? But guess what? I say this with some reservation, okay? And the reason why is some of you are looking for crime-free neighborhoods in, in the United States. Does not exist, okay? All right, so wherever you are looking for an apartment building, there will be crime, all right? So this is just to make you aware of what type of crime is in the neighborhood, okay? That's all, all right? Uh, number three is to drive by yourself, okay? Drive by yourself. The first thing we'll look for when you, when you drive by is curb appeal of the property, but also the neighboring property. And I also like to do what we call the daughter test. What the daughter test is, imagine 
your daughter turning 18 years old and she's looking for her first apartment building and on a Saturday afternoon you jump in the car with your daughter and you go around looking for apartments for her to live in and um, if you drive up to an apartment complex you're going to have an immediate impression of what it looks like and what it feels like right so if you feel uh, safe as a parent your daughter living there that's uh, that's a good that's a good sign it's a good feeling but if you drive up to a place you need to go oh no no way gonna let my daughter live there then that's the daughter test it didn't pass the daughter test got it you probably wouldn't want to uh, buy that place anyway okay all right and then uh, number four is to uh, drive by and consult with a proper manager the key is not the current proper manager because they're not going to tell them themselves right so you need to get a third party a new property manager to give you a fresh opinion and unbiased opinion on the property okay and then uh, I call this uh, boots on the ground opinion okay so uh, boots on the ground because you don't live there uh, you don't own anything, own, own anything nearby so you need a boots on the ground person who are boots on the ground letting you know what's happening in that neighborhood okay are the rents going up uh, is there uh, you know uh, uh, progress in the area or is it on the 11 o'clock news every night you need to know that you probably don't know that their proper manager who uh, who's not currently managing it but manages other area other properties in the area would know that you need to know that okay all right and lastly is decision time okay so it's time to make a decision uh, do you move forward or do you pass okay so you can do all of this and it's free okay all right so the next thing I want to do I'm going to jump into doing uh, the second type of inspection and that's the full-blown professional property inspection let's do that next all right here is the second uh, type of inspection you have to do this is called the full property professional inspection this is where you're going to go out and you're going to get a, a professional property inspector where he specializes in inspecting uh, apartment buildings and he will come in and he will look at everything from the roof all the way down to the foundation to underground and he'll, give, he'll, he'll do a thorough inspection for you okay so full-blown inspection all right here are a few tips I'm going to share with you when uh, organizing uh, such an inspection okay so number one I want you to inspect all of the units not a sampling so when you go out and you talk with these inspectors to get quotes uh, and it, let's say it's a 24 unit apartment building and they will ask you okay we can do a sampling we can do eight or so uh, we'll charge you this or we can do all 24 and we charge you this you want all 24 to be inspected not just a sampling and the reason why is if you have just a sampling done you're going to miss the one right where it's a it's a crack house okay that one unit is where the tenant is really really bad right and it, it's just horrible and you're going to miss that one and that one will cost you about twenty five thousand dollars to fix up after you evict them you don't want to miss that one okay all right uh, number two you need to be present and present what i mean by that is you need to be present that means you need to be there at the inspection you do not let the uh, professional inspector go in by himself and give a report no 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 none of that okay too, uh, too much money involved here you need to be there present and what I mean by the second part is present means I need all of your intention there for those hours that you're there you need to be present there okay no distractions let me give a quick example I had an inspector come out with us and uh, he wanted to see the inspection done right he said he'll help out great come on over okay come on over and and help us out well guess what he was on his cell phone from the morning until lunch I pulled him aside and said you know what if you want to use your cell phone if you want to text everybody go sit in your car we don't need your help okay your money and our money is at risk we need your eyes on the property and not on your cell phone okay so if you're not being able if you're not able to be present uh, you're useless okay this is a very very important thing to do on this property okay you can miss something and it could have cost tens of thousands of dollars to fix because you were texting somebody got it okay that's how important it is number three your property manager your property manager I've submit here needs to be with you property manager I kept out I kept the word manager but manager goes here property manager needs to be with you you need someone who's uh, local to the area 
someone who's uh, familiar with the operations of, a, of an apartment complex uh, looking at it from that perspective, okay? You're looking at it from an investment perspective. Your proper manager is looking at it from an operational perspective. You need that second pair of eyes, okay? All right, so have your proper manager there, all right? Uh, fourthly, if need be, uh, bring a roofer, bring an electrician, bring a, bring a plumber. Uh, if you know that the roof, if you look at the property, you can tell the roof is tattered, you might as well bring a roofer over, right? They're going to have to come back uh, regardless, so why not have them there to give you everything up front, okay? While there's uh, 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 ready access to everything on the property that day. Uh, number five, plan to be there uh, all day, okay, for the entire inspection. Now, if you are looking at five units uh, for, for full product inspection, it will take you a half a day, roughly. If you have 50 units, it can take you two days easily uh, for them to go through all 50 units. And guess what? You should be there uh, for those entire two days to make sure you do not miss something. Okay, got it? Okay, so next thing I wanna do is I wanna go over with you some of the major components of how you actually, uh, what you would you actually do during the inspection. Let's do that next. All right, here we are with a uh, doing a full property inspection. As you are walking through with the inspector, your proper manager's there, you may have a few professionals there, and uh, this is what they'll look for, okay? Now, in just this particular topic, I can probably do a two-hour video on how to go through all of these. We don't have the time for that, right? So I just wanna go over with you the basic items that are so important for you to pay attention to, okay? All right, number one, uh, I put the roof as number one. You know why I know why? It's because oftentimes uh, when we do transactions like large apartment buildings, it's the roof replacement or roof repair that's the most expensive, okay? So I put the roof um, number one, okay? Because it's very expensive, right? And number two, they're gonna take a look at the mechanical systems, the HVAC, the furnace, the ACs. You know, just like, as I mentioned before, you have an eight unit uh, property where there's a, uh, a furnace in the basement. You know, that's a $12,000 uh, replacement if you don't uh, catch it, right? So the inspector is gonna come in and he'll let you know how much lifetime is remaining or he will have you go get an HVAC professional to tell you that, all right? So those type of things you don't wanna miss. Big ticket items. Number three, structural, okay? So they'll look at the foundation, the balconies, retaining walls, the drainage, all the walls, the crawl space, they're gonna give you a report on all that. Uh, again, big ticket item, okay, if there's something wrong there. Uh, number four, the electrical, all right? So uh, there's so much to do in electrical, I'm gonna leave you with two uh, very important things, two very practical things. Number one is, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, in your inspection report, if you're, if you're a property inspector, uh, your property inspector will tell you this, if you have a Zensco uh, electrical panels or Federal Pacific electrical panels, because those have been known to catch fire, okay, across the, across the states since the uh, installation in the 70s, okay? And the, uh, the other thing is aluminum wiring. Uh, aluminum is a great uh, conductor of electricity, but it gets hot. And uh, sometimes up in the furnace, it can overheat and catch fire, okay? Many insurance companies uh, will charge you exorbitant uh, insurance fees or no insurance at all uh, if you have uh, aluminum, if you use aluminum as your wiring, okay? All right, uh, number five, plumbing, okay? Let me just say this, one leaky faucet, okay? Let's say you have 24 units and you find leaky faucets. One leaky faucet will cost you $100 per month in wasted water. Imagine one unit having a leaky faucet in the bathroom, in the kitchen, and uh, and maybe in the uh, maybe in the the toilets leaking. That's three hundred dollars per month going down the drain, and that's only one unit. It's really important as they go through and look at the plumbing that they catch all this. All right, and then uh, number um, six, they're going to go through the interior of the building. They'll look inside the units, the living room, the bathroom, the kitchen. They go through everything and let you know uh, what the issues are there. Okay. Now, lastly. Um, if any of these uh, items here, the roof, mechanical, structural, electrical, plumbing, or interior have any issues, right, you need to bring in the so-called specialists, the roofers, the mechanical persons, right, the structural engineers, maybe the electrician, 
you need to bring them in after the inspection to give you a quote on the cost to fix some of the issues. All right, okay, got it, all right. So let me finish up here and, and let you uh, know what to do after the inspection, really important. Let's finish up there. All right, everyone, let's finish up here. Uh, after your inspection is concluded, what do you do next? Let's talk about that now, all right? So the number one, the thing you're gonna, the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna get the report from the inspector. It will take about three days to get it back. It's gonna be 40 to 60 pages long, right? And you need to sit there and read it very thoroughly, and you need to go through it with the inspector on the phone, okay? Each one, right? And then, uh, in my opinion, this is the part where you need a highly experienced person to help you. Decipher what's important, what's not important. What are the landmines, what are the bullets, and what are some things you just don't care about, right? As a beginner, you probably can't make that determination. And you have so much money at stake, right? Most of our students, this is their largest financial investment that they've made so far in their lives. And you really have to make a, a, a wise decision here on what to do, okay? Um, all right, number two is uh, after you got the report and you got some advice from, you, from your highly experienced advisor, uh, go back to the seller and you need to renegotiate the deal, the deal. We do that with all of our students, right? And I bring up, there's no such thing as as is, right? You're dealing with the real estate agent, uh, you're dealing with the seller, and they'll say, uh, Peter, this deal is as is. We say, okay. And then we do our inspection, right? And then we come back to them and they say, remember, this is as is, but you mean to tell me that there's a four uh, foot gaping hole in the roof and I'm not going to ask you to fix it, <laughs> right? So no, just in my opinion, in my world, there's no such thing as as is, okay? We're gonna go back and we're gonna ask uh, for uh, whatever, whatever defi deficiencies we find in the property to be fixed, okay? Or accredited for price reduction or whatever, okay? And then number three, after the negotiations, it's decision time again where you're gonna go forward, right? Or it's a no-go, right? After the findings you discover, man, there is so much wrong with this property and the owner's not budging a dollar, so it becomes a no-go. And I put a reminder here for you to fall in love with the numbers and not with the property. But the reason why I put that here is because many times uh, at this point, many beginners to get all the way to this point, they have invested dollars and times into the property you know, before they buy it, right? Just because this isn't free, right? And then they figure, man, I, you know, I put all this money into the property. I, I like the way it looks, right? And I don't want to cancel it because I put so much into it already. That's a bad uh, mental state to be in, okay? Again, I want you to fall in love with the numbers and not with the property. So if it's a no-go because of all the reports, you need to pass on the deal, okay? There are better deals waiting for you on the horizon. Got it? Okay, and then uh, number four, if it is a go, uh, whatever you agree to uh, with the seller or the agent, you need to get it in writing, all right? And lastly, it's time to close the deal. Got it? All right. So. Now you just went through a, uh, an inspection with me. Now you know how to conduct a full uh, property inspection on your apartment building. If you like this video, click the like button. If you learned something, uh, share with me uh, exactly what you learned in the comment box. I would love to hear from you, okay? We'll love it. All right, everyone, so thank you so much for uh, watching how to inspect an apartment building. If you want more videos like this, go ahead and hit the like button or go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel or go on to our website to get free training there at commercialpropertyadvisors.com. Thank you everyone and I'll see you at the next video.